Well, this is different. It's upside down. Oh, there it goes. Operator here. I think that could be some of that. We're ready when y'all are. It's all right. Good evening. Howdy. Thank you. Taking a uh, two-hour presentation, there was 53 slides, and I knocked it down to 13. But I didn't get all of oh, Okay, whoop. It's filming. Ah, thank you. Here, I got this. Yeah, I'll help you. I'm the city manager for the city of St. Mary's. Uh, thank you for taking the time to listen uh, to our project and consider it. Um, this is a collaborative effort between the city of St. Mary's and Radiant, which is a subsidiary of Rainier. Uh, with us tonight, we've got Mr. Paul Rice, who is with Radiant, Jim Costi. With uh, AB Advisory, they put together the financial analysis uh, project. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to try and take you through our slides real quick and kind of give you know, some questions. Our experts will be more build as well. Um, this is not a traditional development. It worked. This is a development where traditional development, sitting in your office, you get a knock on the door. Hey, we're going to come build in your review. That's not what happened. What happened was we went to. Hey, hey Rob, I don't want to mess your flow up, baby. If you'll get near that microphone. I can't stand in that spot. Y'all got a portable one? No, we're good. There's a portable one over here if you want to. You look like you uh, want the prices right now. Come on down. Bring them on down. It's just we'll be getting calls from the folks online that can't hear you. Test one, two. There you okay, go. good. This is, like I said, this is not a traditional development. This is not where they come to you. We went to Radiant, knocked on the door and said, look, exit one's real important to the city of St. Mary's because this is our gateway. This is our, this is where you come in you get off at exit one, it says St. Mary's. That's important to the city. It has been for many years. Um, we got documentation back to 1995 where we were doing the same thing that we did here. Um, but this time we, we were able to talk and really work together. So this is a collaboration between the two, if you will, sir. It's in our master plan from two, uh, 2017. We identified some people were involved in, some people weren't, but basically identified that our focus was on economic development, um, developing the mill property, which is the Jacoby project, also strengthening, or also the airport site. As most of you know, the Commerce Park is well underway. We currently have one, uh, company that is in the process. They've already, we they purchased and everything. We have three more that are in due diligence and in the process of locking down. The, then it was the strengthening the corridor from midtown to downtown. We're working on an RSVP or Renaissance, kind of like we did for our downtown area. We're doing the same thing for midtown. And then it was the area west of the city to exit one on I-95. That is the property. This was, about, as I said, in 2017 when this document came out. 
So that's been what's driving us this entire time. So if you will, sir. As I said, we have Mr. Jacoby's project. We have S&G Block that's already engaged. We have future developments that are over around Gilligan's Island, and y'all have some of that property as well. So there's development that is occurring that folks are asking questions and developing in those areas and around the hospital, things of that nature. And then there's this project. Uh, so if you will, sir. What is this project? We are in the process, and one of our requests for this evening is the creation of TAD2, helping us with that. And it at build out, we're looking at approximately 16.3 million annually new increment property taxes for this TAD property across the board. It is a $1.354 billion project overall. Um, Tax increments being around 517 million increase to the digest for just the city of St. Mary's, which is a 90% increase in our tax digest. Again, that's 90% increase. Um, there's a whole bunch of other numbers there. You can look over on your left hand side. You, the documents that you have is the big document. That's the 53 slides, and it was two hours going through, and I wasn't about to do that, y'all. But uh, you'll find all this information in those documents as well, as also what we're doing as far as traffic goes. We are in the process of working with DOT and things of that nature. That's just a sidebar. This is a 20-year project. Uh, there's two phases to this project. This is the first phase. So... We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. But those are some of the overall numbers that we're seeing. And on the map, you can see the area that we will be annexing or trying to annex and the area for the TAD. So, what are we going to put there? Well, it's still early in the game. It's going to be zoned in as a PD, which means basically the items that you see up on the table, the development summary, um, Overall project area, 1,786 acres. Overall, the whole area is like 1,973 acres total. Uh, the Commerce Park area, which is highlighted in the purple up in the upper left-hand corner, um, where you see the red F, that is where the Commerce Park is speculatively going. Uh, we have mixed-use areas, conservation areas, single family detached, and then single family, multifamily, um, industrial, office, um, possibility could be a golf course, could be a hotel, retail service, and health care. Health care, that's always a big question. The health care we're talking about here could be anything from assisted living, um, doctor's offices, and things of that nature. It's just a general, when you look at a PD, these are all the things that could possibly be there. We have to I'm sorry, we don't. Radiant will begin once we get this approved and get going. That's the next phase of it. They'll start looking at land management and trying to work out exactly where everything's going to go and, and placement of, of everything. Has, there been a, has be. anybody looked at a, uh, don't, you still, don't you have to do a CON certificate of need? If you do, if anything medical like that, you do have to have a certificate of need by the state. Yeah, has anybody looked into that, or they started? No, sir. We're not even we're not even there yet. Okay, but that's that's a very good point, Commissioner. Um, so, it's a it's a planned development, a mixed use. So, it, it one could be a little bit bigger than the other, and the other could be a little bit smaller. So, just that's but this kind of gives us the opportunity to develop the property as the market sees fit. Scott. The map in front of you, this is some of the other things. 65% of the overall project is allocated towards utilities, which is water, sewer, some roadways. Uh, there will be a fire station and a fire truck in it as well. Um, but it's also going to require some expansion of our existing sewer system to allow for increase of flow of fluent affluent. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, are they are are y'all going to uh, looking at opening up, reopening up the uh, 
Sure. The, the Scrubby Bluff plant will be reopened and it is also needing to be increased, um, which will double the size of it. It was approved for a million gallons. I didn't know that. That's correct. That over with the EIS or is that still? Yeah, we still have, we still have the, the license or permitting permit, not license right. permit, 4 million gallons. And, uh, but we will be increasing no, I meant the, the permitting for the one out there. It, it right. was originally a permitted for a million gallon. You're talking about Scrubby Bluff, right? Scrubby Bluff, yeah. Yes, sir. You are correct. And, and we still hold that, we still hold that permit and it is, it's still in state. Okay. So it, it could be expanded to the million gallon without that is going correct. through. Yes, sir. That is correct. Um, but it's our sewer lines is what's got to be increased. And some of our lift stations are also because a lot of the flow on this initial phase will be going back to the Point Pier plant. So it's both of them will be working in conjunction. Okay. As you can see on the right hand side, it's hard to read all the little fine print. Um, but this is what's being created by all the projects that we currently have the developments that are underway. We're anticipating um, the water side, an increase of 2.59 billion gallons a day and our sewer system 2.705 million gallons a day in increase in, in our sewer. So we're going to have to expand to be able to maintain those capabilities at our Point Peter plant as well. So that's just a kind of overview. So there's a benefit here um, for the entire city, not just because of this project. So that that's also part of it. Scott, if you will. Um, we've got to put down a well, we've got to have water res a reservoir there to support the water. Uh, we've got to have a service road in for our fire station. We've got to build a fire station for the area because of the warehouses and the possibilities of those hotels in that area and to maximize as much as we can on the ISO rating. Um, so just with the first phase, we're looking at uh, that's 12. We're looking at $15 million just on the first phase. I think it's 19 actually, um, if I remember correctly. So now is that up at the top there, does that go to Haddock Road? Um, yes, sir. on the left hand side. Yes, sir. That, but no, that's actually the, the property. The the unshaded area right here. Okay, so the that, yellow is the that is that and then you've got that's a piece of property and then you've got Haddock Road over here. Right. So, I know one time I, I saw a long time ago there was a access road coming off the top up there going over to Haddock Road. I I see it's not on here now. I didn't yeah. know. I'm I'm unfamiliar with that, Commissioner. I think that was um something that JDA had planned at one time. It, it could have been. It was something there was, it was, yeah, I think it was when JDA, I had some maps I might still have, but anyway, so it's not in this right now. Right. So Scott, if you will. Here's the overall picture of the thing. I'm not sure what page that is on your handout, um, but the, you've got the fire station road in the upper left-hand corner. And Commissioner Blunt, you can see that's that property you were just asking me about. Yeah, yeah. So you've also got the, what we're referring to as Haddock Road South right now, that comes down over by the Welcome Center, it goes to the back gate of the Welcome Center and it turns and goes to the, the Scrubby Bluff treatment plant. Right. Uh, this roadway is also in consideration. Uh, well, actually this whole road is considered into this, into this project as well. So that's that's the other side of it. This is the city's portion. Um, all the rest of the roads and stuff in there, that's gonna be on, on radiant. The city's portion is Haddock? Yes, sir. The Haddock Loop is what we're calling it. Now where, is, where is the Haddock Loop part of this? Well, the Haddock Loop, where you see the purple coming down right here, and then it loops back up and goes back into St. Mary's Road. That will actually be in phase two of the project, though. Okay. OK. 
Okay. And, and that's not part of the, uh, that's not going to be part of the, I guess, TAD expenses, the city's paying for that separately? Yes, sir. Well, no, it, it is a part of the TAD. Okay. It is a part I mean, of it's TAD. part of the TAD area, boundary yes. wise. But it, the, no, it's, it, this is part money. of the money that, for okay. the bond that we'll be taking out. Okay. Yes. Thank you. This is the Haddock Loop. Haddock yes. Water and sewer. Yes. And the city will, obviously, the city will have that. Now, the other roads and streets, are they going, are they going to be privately owned? Or are they yes, going? they'll be privately owned. It will not be a gated community, correct? Yeah, it's, it's not being planned on being a gated community. Uh, you've got commercial lining either side of St. Mary's Road, for the most part, in little pods, if you will, down through there. Um, to kind of get an idea of the overall layout of the whole project. So, this uh, this this service road on the St. Mary's this where you had the F. Yes, sir. There's a road coming off of St. Mary's Road. Yes, sir. Can you go back one slide, Scott? That's well, right. That's one more. Let's see if it's right there. Right here. Yeah. This. Point five eight between right, here that, and is here. Is that the service road you're referring to right there on your call estimates? That's the one for the fire station. One I've got my fingers on. But that will also be that's one part. That's part that of the city's responsibility. Commercial. Yes, that will go into the commercial area up there, the purple area. Yes, that's going to be going to industrial. That'll be where the warehouses. I, I, just out of curiosity, has anything. You know, it's a limited access road, as I'm sure everybody knows. Has anybody seeked any DOT approval or federal? Yes, sir. We have been in conversation with the local DOT office, and I have personally gone to Atlanta and sat down with the commissioner and discussed it with him. Um, as most of you know, we already have traffic issues at uh, Exit 1 Interchange. Um, they had presented with us just prior to us getting in contact with Radiant um, a double roundabout at that intersection, one on either side of the interstate. Oh. So we had kind of put them off and put them off and put them off. So when I sat down with the commissioner and I explained to him the project, this entire project and how it's going to impact it, one of the things that Radiant did on their dime is that they engaged a traffic engineer to look at it and they were able to tell by how their math, however they do that, that's that engineer stuff, uh, is that about halfway into the project of the of the of this area that those roundabouts will fail. So we presented all that information to the commission. So these, this, this service road wouldn't tie in to a roundabout. No. Well, that's where I was going. Okay. When I when I met with the commissioner, we explained to him what was going on, showed him the numbers. The traffic engineers went with us, and he looked at it. And he his exact words were, "We're not going to put a band aid fix on this. We need to look at this now. We need to look at it and fix it right this time." So, have they indicated whether there'd be some sort of? I mean, obviously, if you're going to have a service road coming off the of St. Mary's. And it's too far away from the red light. It's not going to be something there. This would be, have to be a completely different interchange. They're they're evaluating that, and and we're right now where you're seeing those where you saw those cuts at. That's where the basically where the existing cuts are at. Uh, I think there may have been one that had been added to it, but for the most part, all those cuts are where the existing cuts are. As the, as the DOT indicated on, on whether they would give you access or not. They are they we're working with them on a uh, daily basis still studying it, sir. I said, so they still just studying it. They're they're working on it. Uh, really, and truly, what they're waiting on is for us to engage the project. And once the project's engaged, then they'll turn loose on it. They've already begun preliminary, but they're not going to dig into it until that time. So, Scott. <clears throat> Give me one more, please. Here's the overall numbers for the project. We have not looked into grants yet. We've got our grant folks working on it, uh, lining up grants to identify, to help us reduce the amount of money that we're engaged in. Uh, the first phase is 31.4 million. Um, 
and the second phase is 64.1. As I said, 65% of the overall project is for the infrastructure, the water, the sewer, and those roadways. So this TAD will cover both phases, so it's a yes, ninety-five sir. million dollar. Yes, sir. And what is the time frame on phase one, roughly? Phase one, the the overall TAD is for twenty years. Um, that's that's the entire life of the project. The phase one is basically get us up to about twenty twenty-six off the top of my head, and then we'll have to engage that second phase. Okay, so we'll get into the money here in just a minute, if you will. Okay. When you, here's the development summary on the project. Um, you can you can read that as well as I can, and I don't want to sit here and read it to you, but basically it's $1.354 billion project. Um, you can see the number of how it builds out, the square footage that's going to be done, and then the value at the bottom. Scott, if you will. So here's here's the numbers that, that we really need to look at. At 100% commitment by Camden County, the Camden County School Board, and the City of St. Mary's, the, the TAD increment that is generated over 20 years will equal out estimated at one, $171 million, roughly. Uh, for the entire project. Um, sales tax, City of St. Mary's over 20 years could possibly see uh, 15.9 million. Camden County alone see 18.8 .8 million sales tax generated. Uh, the other cities um, could possibly, well, are estimated to see 16.4 million and the Camden County School Board 23 Point six million. Um, so that that's the TAD would generate going back up to that that one hundred and seventy one at a hundred percent. Okay. I was just trying to get to the executive summary. I'm sorry. Okay, I was just trying to get on the right book yes, here. This is just this is the beautification project that will be a part of it. What you see on the left hand side is the monumentation that, that will be there. Um, and then on the right hand is what you'll see on the right hand side as you get off on I-95 headed towards St. Mary's. Um, one of the things that we asked when all this started, um, when we met with Radiant was I was asked what what was it I saw? Um, and what was told to them, we want to maintain who we are as the city of St. Mary's, but we want something new, but we want something that respects the history of who we are as a community. Um, so this is what's been put up. If you look over to the right hand side, that is a multi use path that will run back towards uh, run up to Osprey. And then we've got to figure out how to get it on over to Highway 40 and, and tie it into that one. <clears throat> It'll be lined with more mature, more mature uh, trees. Um, y'all, y'all, y'all plan on taking the overall plan in the end is to take this. Uh, what is that? Walking golf cart path, whatever. Multi-use. All the way from from exit one. one. To eventually, highway 40. eventually get it to Highway Forty. That the piece in front of Osprey and right there that interchange. That's not a part of this project. That's something we've got to figure out. Right. Okay. Okay. So what about on the other side, is there going to be something similar or is it just going to be on one? No, side? sir, just be on one side. Okay. Um, looking at your other document, the economic impact analysis. All those numbers are in there. They're generated for you. Um, you can kind of see how the project's laid out, how the build out is estimated to go, and where to go from there. So right now I'm open for questions. 
So who do we have here tonight? Mr. We have Mr. Jeff Kos Koskett. I said it right? Again? Wow, that's good. He's with KB Advisory. He put the financial advisor, uh, put the financial document together. Uh, and you have Mr. Paul Rice with Radiant. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that y'all were acquiring property, still acquiring property. Is that Radiant acquiring? No, sir. That, no. Radiant owns the property we're talking about. Uh, just, uh, maybe was I, was, I think I was referring to uh, the annexation piece. Because we're annexing this property in into the city of St. Mary's. And I think that's what I was referring to. Okay. So this entire track will be annexed in, I presume. Yes, sir. How much property all good are y'all trying to annex into the county? I'm sorry, Commissioner. How, how much property are you or y'all, the city of St. Mary's? How much? I think it's 1,700 acres in the project. Well, it's, it's 19. 19. 1973 or something like that is, is the annex out the town from the county. Yes, sir. yes sir. Well, that's not really annexed out of the county, it's still in the county. You're just gonna make it your problem by annexing it. <clears throat> and of course, you would have to do that to be able to put your water and sewer and yeah. have your tad out there. I was just saying total project area was 1,786 acres, I thought. That's the property. That's not part of the 1.7. Sure, please do. Step up, step up where we can hear you there, if you don't mind. I think this is correct. The 1900 acres includes the 17, 1800 acres of radiant, but there are two other parcels that are part of the annexation to that are kind of islands. And if you, those other these two are all by other folks. That's yeah. correct. Okay. And who are these folks or where are they? The, the, the KC property and the KC property and the, the pond Coast. in the middle of it all. Be yes, sir. That pond rectangular pond. Yes, sir. That that's being brought in. And the um, gross gross has a, a sliver of property as well. It was pretty small, wasn't it? It's it is it is over. It's behind the, the store. The old mom and pops that sits there. Right on the oh, oh okay, okay that's yeah. right. So you talked about you know the road the Haddock Loop and you know the some of the sewer and water infrastructure upgrades the beautification. What all else is going to go into? this uh, TAD fund as far as to be paid out of the, the TAD funds? Fire station, fire truck, the beautification project, um, utilities. That's, that's, that's about it right now. Okay. I thought I saw yep. in one of these pictures. There's one of those in, in that big that says is it in the economic game? No, it's not in that one. It's in the yes, other. It's in the slides. It's uh, 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 I know I saw it. Yeah, and that's too many papers. Here it is. On the St. Mary's Corridor proposed improvement plan cost estimate for our station 5.5. That's your service road 1.5 and the water storage. <laughs> when you say storage, it's like that. Well, I, there it is. Well, yeah, it was I, what I was looking at was on there. Okay, I'm Just sorry. a little bit more of a yeah, it's the water, water store, uh, water storage improvements, beautification, fire station, Haddock Loop, and other roadway. Uh, Improvements when so wanted, i.e., signalization if it's needed at the intersections. Now, phase one, let's see, water sewer, that's St. Mary's. What's the second line? Beautification, Beautification of St. Mary's Road. That was, that, that, uh, that under, was the monumentation. Is that the one in St. Mary's is ramrodding? Yes, sir, in the multi use. And product. obviously the fire station and, and the Haddock Road loop. loop. Yes, sir. Now, you say other road improvements. What? That's, that's, the entrance ways at the main uh, 
entry point um, for, and possibility of signalization at those, at those main locations. entry points. Where we at the main entry point? Can you carry it back to the to the big property? It's not the service road to the fire station. No. Okay. Well, it it can be. It could be one if if there was a need for a traffic light there. That that could be. Um, take it back up. Another one, please. I mean, you go. There's going to be a traffic light somewhere, but that much Haddock development. Loop, where you see Haddock Loop meeting St. Mary's Road, right, right above where I'm at. Yeah, I see it's coming out on that steep curve. Right. Right there. Right. That's where that That's curve is. That that could possibly be signalization there. When you say the main entrance, that's the main entrance into into the project go to north. Not north where you south. not where you welcome to St. Mary's thing. That's right. North. Okay. Yes. That's, so there's a road either side, presumably going to. I see that. Yes. Is that loose? Is that you've, you've got this intersection right here, right? And you also have that intersection right there that and are that, being considered. Well, I can't tell where that the uh, the one where that first intersection point to. Does the Haddock Loop go on across St. Mary's Road? I see it loops back around and comes back to 40. Is that still part of Haddock Loop? That makes the loop. Well, we we don't know what it's going to be called, but that's that's part of the. But the, that's part of what St. Mary's is. Put. No, 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 no. So the Haddock Loop no, is just first, our, south south side of St. Mary's Road. Yes, oh, absolutely. Okay. Got to ask the right question. Get the right answer, Brent. Right. I just want to make sure. Okay. So that road on that side is part of the development plan. On the south side, yes, sir. Okay. And and these are, I guess, when you say I had it blue, is this a two lane road or does this have a median or do we know? It's it's early on. We the part then phase one will be basically just a two lane road coming down from around the welcome center. Let's see, we're right. Right. So coming down this way. They wanted to work. And then turning back in around the, the old scrubby bluff plant. Okay. Well, I realize when you put that road in predominantly for a while, it'll be construction. Yes. Sir. Uh I don't know that you'd want to go in there and make it your finished product, <clears throat> realizing you know sir. There'll be a lot of construction activity. I just didn't know if there were down the road plans to uh there would be. But yeah, basically, basically getting where we can have it for construction and being able to get folks in there to look at the property and things of that nature. Okay. Any other questions? Robert, when were these plans put together? I'm sorry, Ms. Brown. When were the plans put together? They have been being put together for the last two years. I just see some names on here that engineering firms that no longer exist. Well, which ones are you? Well, they may have came from our, our document. Might have, might have and everything. There's one right there. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, it did. That was that came from our files. OK, OK. It's as I said, it's a collaborative effort. We've um, we've been at the table the whole time meeting um, at a minimum once a week for at a Shortest amount of time has been four hours. Well, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room. Yes, sir. Uh, all we've heard is horror stories about what went on in wildlife. This seems to be a similar deal down in Nassau County. I don't know enough to know what went on down there to ask a good question, but you hear an awful lot of stuff going on. That's what done to school this and that. I can. I I've can looked tell at it and it's. It looks like it's not getting developed too quickly. Which which one's not getting developed? I'm talking about the wildlife one. This is going to be. They are actually they are actually ten years ahead of schedule. And that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. that's they that's um fact and perception thing. To getting back to your original question on that, if I may, mm -hmm. Commissioner, and I would tell you to don't just read the headlines. I generally don't. Dig into the actual meat of it and look at all the articles as it relates to that. Um, we have we have talked with Radiant. We are aware of the situation, and I've also had conversations with the folks on the south side as well. Um, 
and I have my personal opinion and I don't have a problem standing in front of you tonight and saying that we're okay with working with radio. Now, I hear you loud and clear and that's, you're not gonna hurt my feelings or whatever. Um, I've never been afraid to do that. Neither have you though. Say again? I said, I've never been afraid to do that. Neither have you. No, sir, I haven't, nor you. Uh, you know, This is our first time looking at it. And we're looking at a $95 million tab. Uh, I don't know that I know enough what's in here to ask the correct, right, intelligent enough questions to get to where I need to get to to feel good about what we're doing. Uh, I'm glad you showed up. Uh, I'll forget your name again, Mr. Ray. Oh, uh, that does make a difference. Uh, I can certainly tell you I wasn't going to be doing anything if the owner wouldn't feel the need to show up. It was my understanding it wasn't originally. Uh, it, it, it's a lot to digest. Uh, uh, after night, as far as public meetings, I'm out the door. Two of us are. Uh, and I, I mean, my comments to staff, uh, Sean and the attorney, uh, I haven't had the opportunity to get down in the weeds on this and kind of understand it. Uh, I, our staff, to my knowledge, has not. Have we? Right. Uh, I just feel like for me to feel comfortable moving forward with this, I would like to, uh, I, I think we need to get our, I think our, our county manager, our city attorney. Uh, That's county attorney, sir. City, hey, our county manager. I'm just going to go, Sean and John need to look at it. I, Commissioner. I, what, Sean? What, Sean? You throw a minute of there. Commissioner, if I may, I understand the hesitation and I understand the magnitude of what you're I talking mean, about. I mean, on looking at it, it's like Santa Claus is coming to town. I get it. It's wonderful. All this stuff, and I get St. Mary's. The rush has been to get to interstate since the interstate opened. Everybody was annexing down St. Mary's Road, Kingman. There was a fight over the exit one quadrant. You know, it kind of got settled where, okay, Kingman, we even ran water lines. We even, the city even had water lines on the west side of 95. That were hidden with trash bags, <laughs> hydrants, and it kind of got where okay, we're gonna take the west side, you take mm -hmm. the east side. It kind of, you know, St. Mary's was wanting the welcome center, and I get it. I, I mean, I do. Uh, this would be St. Mary's only opportunity to get to it in a state and have some development like that. And uh, it's just uh, it's a uh, big bold step. And to making the commitment like that, I just, uh, anyway. Well, Commissioner, I, you know, certainly do respect your opinion wholeheartedly. Mine won't last much longer, though, so go ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I do respect it. Now, it is, it is a large project. It is a big number. Um, I would tell you that the key numbers to focus on on this project is that TAD generating 171 million. And I will take, be honest with you enough to tell you that school board, we they're meeting with them here in just a few minutes. Um, they're they're doing step down because of the impact on the school program. I don't think they're act, taking any action on it tonight, though. Uh, well, that's a surprise. Um, anyway, so they're down to like 100, 120, 120 million um, on, over the, the life of the, the 20 years. Um, is what we've come, not 171, but be 120 million, roughly. Right. Um, and what we need to be able to do the project, we being the city of St. Mary's, not Radiant, the city of St. Mary's, is at 96 million. But we're only doing the first phase of it at 31.4. And when you figure it out, when you figure the interest and all the other stuff, it's, it's right at 50 million. Um, that's what we're needing to engage in. And that's what our request is tonight 
is for you to approve the tab so we can do well, that. Well, when you approve the tab, everything that's in there goes along with it. It's, it's, I know you got yes. it in phases, but and just, no. and, and just like in conversation with him, I'm, you know, what's going to be here and there, there are a tremendous amount of unknowns and development unknowns. And, 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 and understandably so. I'm just not making a critical statement. That's just how it is. We don't know. You, you don't know how many residential you're going to really end up with. You don't know how much commercial you're going to. And I get it because it's a big project to plan out. And I just, uh, has St. Mary's created this TAD yet? No, sir. So they'll be voting on it on the 19th. And one of the reasons is that we need to try and lock this in is, is because this locks in the tax rate for 2022, which is a lower rate. Um, the way the tab would work is that because this is currently agriculture, it'll lock it in at the agriculture rate. As you, everybody knows, it's the lowest of all the tax bases that we have. So the minute it goes in and we, we change it to a PD, the value of that property starts to increase, which starts developing that TAD over time. And that's a great point. And when that happens, you know, our millage right now is 14. So we're locking it in at 14. That's right. And so. Well, you're locking in the value. No, you, I understand. It's locking in the value of the property. So. But you're, we, locking, it, you, you're locking it in based on a 14 millage rate. You're not? No, you're blocking in the value of the property. Okay, so the value is is a hundred dollars right now. It'll be a hundred dollars until the tabs over. I got you. in in twenty years. But as you increase, and I'm just saying, so the lock in the value. commission would increase their property tax. But as you increase your property tax, it will still. You'll still you see still growth in the value of the property. On the locked in and value. You won't that won't go in the tab. Okay. So if you lock it in at a hundred dollars, figured that piece of land cost you a hundred dollars. Right, I understand. All right. That's what the value is. So whatever you're that's that's what you'll you'll continue to draw, just like you're drawing regardless the of exact, the right. Exactly. Okay, I just but if you increase your Millage rate. Millage rate. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to see an increase on that hundred dollars based on that. Lock yes, value. on that hundred dollars. That, that's what Am I'm I saying it wrong. The, the state law, the way the state law is set up, and this is different in in. It's every state. locking down the total value. It's locking down the total value. You you can manipulate. You years. you will. Your body will over twenty years manipulate your millage rate. That really doesn't impact the locked in value. The, the, it's all about the value. It's a dollar amount. The dollar amount. Yep. That's, that's what I'm saying. And, and it's locked in. I understand. And that's what you'll continue to get. Right? Anything above that, the value, it's all about but the value. But it'll only collect at what the 14 mil rate is. No. I mean, that's that's the thing. Is it doesn't matter about the millage rate. So, so the collections today will continue to be the collections every single year but for, today, the rest, yeah, for the today's life price of the tax. calculated off, off 14. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. As today's the price is right. calculated right. at 14 yep. mils. Yep. If next year they go up to 14 and a quarter or 17 or whatever, Still doesn't there's change. no right. benefit yeah. to the county. It's locked in at this. Right. Sorry, I didn't understand yep. what you said. And, you know, that, that's something that needs to be understood. So looking at You the, get this, Miss you know, Nancy? It, it, it's 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 a you know a small infantile fraction of the overall budget of course so you know it's you're you're not putting a lot in uh, at stake with with the values today right you know looking at the values and the return uh, you know what's been calculated in these numbers to you know I, I know that it's a mixed use and there's a lot of you know commercial and light industrial use which. <clears throat> Typically, the burden, you know, to provide services or the cost to provide services aren't as high as residential. Um, how's that been calculated to determine what the the cost to provide services to the residential component, you know, compared to the commercial component? Um, what are you saying? I, well, here, what I can tell you, to maybe help, is yep. that at the TAD plan. The state law requires that there's a school impact analysis. So there's in the plan in the back, there's an entire section devoted just to the schools. Mm -hmm. So that that gives you a general sense of how the schools 
um, the cost benefit, if you will, of uh, servicing the additional students that will be there. Okay, and there's there's impact on public safety as well, which I understand you got a fire station, fire station right? But that, that's kind of what I was getting at. I mean, you know, you've got a fire station in here, which is going to be a service to provide to the people that live, you know, near build, the building. Fire station's cheap. Operate it. Okay, we'll build it. Y'all operate it. <laughs> Uh, I've been down that, I've done that kabuki dance. We'll go out and build a fire station. It's those operating costs for the next. We know that. Yes, sir, we do. We, and, and you, 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 you know, and I realize this is over a 20 year period. Yes, sir. And I don't know enough to know at this point on what point you need to add a fire station or what, you know, you don't have to have whether it gets roads, police, everything involved. The ambulance says that'll impact the county because the county be adding an ambulance because right now we do all the ambulances. So anyway, just just a lot to consider. Has there been like a preliminary developers agreement or a yes. you know, business plan of action? We are, as as we've been working under developers agreements since September, March. Okay. Since March. Uh, so we're just, yeah, we Where were have done this in November, but due to whatever we had to push it back to for now. Where, where's the developer agreement? Where? I mean, do we have one? I don't know if I have it with me, but I, I mean, I would like, I would think, I would like to see the commitments being made by everyone, by Raylan, St. Mary's, you know, what, you know, it's, you know, things we were talking about earlier, and, not sure. I understand they're not, you can't set everything in stone at the moment, but. Uh, I don't know what kind of parameters or guidelines or. I, I, I happen to live in St. Mary's too, so it's going to affect me on both ends. And when I, one other thing I'm looking at, the other thing that a little bit concerns me is with the 1,700 acres I'm looking, I'm seeing about, if I'm not mistaken, I saw, and I'm not trying to pick just negative stuff, I'm just pointing out, I don't want to be cat mobbious either, but uh, I'm, just, I'm looking at the development uh, commercial areas, 128 acres, so it's less than 10% of the total develop, development, 1,700 acres. Uh, clarify the development agreement only outlines the timing and the commitments that have been presented tonight. There is no additional detail around how and when it will be developed because we haven't done that exercise. That exercise comes after we receive the PUD, the annexation approvals. Then we sit down and actually get granular on the on the land itself to figure out from a market standpoint what's going to go where. That's not in the developer agreement. So I wanted to clarify if that was your expectation. That's part of Didn't it. want you disappointed. Uh, you're going to be hard pressed to disappoint me. <laughs> but part of that too is uh, I would like for my little bald headed buddy over here at our county attorney to look at that. I'd like, I, I'd like, I'd like to have the opportunity to see these, these instrumental documents related to the development of this property and the, and because it's going to have uh, perspective impacts on the county and the city, and just uh, see who's who's controlling who. Where, I mean, who's who's answering whom? I I would tell you, and 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 I understand, Commissioner, what you're saying. Um, the agreement is between us and the city of St. Mary's and with Radiant, um, and. The county's obligation granted is the TAD helping us with the TAD. Um, I realize once y'all annex it, it's y'all. I, I get it. Yes, sir. And, you know, uh, but as you pointed out, we're contributing, we're part of the finance impact. Yeah. To the tune of, forgot the, where is it? <clears throat> Uh, Kendham County, 67 million. No, wait a minute. No. 
Camden uh, County uh, is 67 8. Oh, I did read it right. Okay. That's only based on the increased value of the property. Yes, sir. If you don't do the TAD and it sits there like it is now, you've lost a all opportunity to develop. Yes, sir. And, and just as a reminder, you're not, it's not just the TAD money. I mean, it's not just the property tax that's existing that you'll be receiving as this thing develops. When it's all said and done, it's estimated, you know, you've got $18.8 million coming in from sales tax. Well, I understand. I, 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 mean, I, I get it that there's going to be different revenue streams along with this. This yes. is just... This is the part related just to the taxes. And uh, one of the questions that comes to me that whenever we're starting this and uh, going back to those phases, St. Mary's, for example, putting in all the roads of water and sewer and all this stuff, uh, as you know, Commissioner Casey just said, we get all these roads in there. And we've had developments with roads in there. As I recall, I had well, we had roads and lots and water and lots sewer and power. The water and sewer and power and tap and everything paid and it sat there for yes eight to ten years the roads before it got we're, developed. But the roads that we're doing, that that we're talking about, the things that the city is doing, uh -huh. that this money is doing, is strictly the backbone. Those interior roads, those interior well, lots, and running that. You know, off the main trunks and everything, that's going to be on the development. But but the city of St. Mary's is going, that's going to be one of the first thing you need to do. So, just to clarify on the Haddock Road loop, mm -hmm. the longest portion of it doesn't happen until the second phase. And so, in the developer agreement, you'll actually see that there's an option, depending on how that develops, that it may not even be needed. So, we've been very thoughtful. If I saw that developer agreement, I'd agree with you. Right, and that's been public record since March, so we'll I get you a copy I of that, know. and it's been out there. Yep. But to, to your point, the city does not need to make significant road investments initially at all, other than the fire station road to access the fire station and the improvement to St. Mary's Road itself. That's the extent from a road infrastructure investment that happens. Later, as the south side begins to develop, then the Haddock Road loop becomes uh, a component. And the hope of everybody, we're all dependent on the market, right. is that by that point in time, there's significant revenues that are being generated. And that, that brings up another point to me. We're easing into not a very favorable development market. Rates are up, price rates are the thing, but we all see what's going on. You call the realtor, the phone not ringing like they were, no, nothing like that. And, I, you know, I, I did it myself. I know. Time I listed my first property, uh, the wheels had run off the wagon. You are absolutely correct. The market is the market. We have zero control over it. I understand. There will be probably a year or two worth of work in getting things set up. What will happen in two years, three years in terms of the market? I, I couldn't in any way predict, but we're all we're all kind of taking risks. We're making investments just like everybody else is with the anticipation. What, what would the your comes be? What, what kind of investments? Are the study that was presented said that the uh, the uh, investments from a development standpoint are about one point three. Three billion, something like that anticipated. One point three million billion billion. Yep. That's over the whole year period. period. Yep. In your first phase. And I'm not saying that Radiant is, is doing that. Our goal is to bring in developers, bring in all the different people. Okay. And if you accumulate all those investments from those developers, that's what you could expect according to the study. Okay. Well, we're coming up on five till. I think we need to take a quick break before we head into our meeting. I don't want to hate to cut it off. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity to listen and present. I think we need thank to have you. a lot of this, quite honestly. Uh, you're just tired to sit down and interact and, and, and just where everybody gets a better understanding and can feel better about it. So anyway, right now we're going to stand adjourned on the uh, work session.
Hey, Miss John.
Welcome to the uh, Cattle County Board of Commissioners meeting for let's say, February, uh, December the 13th. Uh, if everyone wants to stand for the invocation and pledge allegiance, invocation by Commissioner Brown. Let us pray. Father God, we're so thankful for this beautiful day you've given us. Father, we thank you for every household that is represented here this evening. Father, just continue to give us the wisdom and guidance that needed to make the decisions that benefit all of Camden County. For this, we pray in your most glorious name. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and Give me just one second. I got to lock myself out. Ms. Bishop, forum. All commissioners are present. All right. Thank you. All right, I'm back. All right, this time. Uh, we got some agenda amendments uh, for the removal of item 15. Can I get a motion on that, please? Motion to approve. Huh? Do what now? What's he on? Have a 15. Well, it's only. Well, it jumped. Hang on. Sorry, what my twelve? Oh, wrong agenda. There we go. All right. Seeing no agenda amendments, can I get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Pretty good. All those in favor? Motion carries. Katie. All right. We have before you the minute from the November 15th, uh, 22 public hearing and regular minute, uh, regular meeting minutes. Uh, are there any corrections, adjustments, or changes? If not, could I get a motion on it, please? Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Do you want me to pause now, Sean, or after the president? No, Mr. Chairman. Right now is a good time. Uh, just before uh, Kevin comes up and does his presentation on the trash truck enforcement, um, just I know this is yours and uh, Commissioner Clark's last meeting, and we would just like to take this opportunity to recognize you uh, and Commissioner Clark for y'all's leadership on the board for these past 12 years. We've got a presentation, but I think Scott may have to put it up. So. I'm going to wait until he kind of gets done, but I know we've gone through uh, countless meetings, probably thousands of meetings uh, in that 12 years time frame and approved several million dollars worth of capital projects, construction projects, operational um, you know, enhancements that we've done throughout the years. It's really hard to quantify all of that for 12 years that each of you have voted on. So um, what we have uh, planned for you uh, to this evening, I'm going to just kind of touch on some highlights. Uh, some of the items that we felt like, you know, really needed to be highlighted for your major accomplishments uh, throughout the 12 years that you've been in office um, as a commissioner. So we'll wait till Scott gets this up. Oh, we got pictures. Yeah, we're going to recognize you tonight. I don't look like that. It's not, it's not too often that you all get to be recognized. So we're going to recognize you two tonight for all of your leadership and expertise uh, throughout your time as a county commissioner. Scott, if you'll take us to the next page. So some of the major accomplishments that you two have been able to you know, sit on the board for and actually adopt and approve is uh, we've had no general fund debt in 10 of the 13 fiscal years that you've been on this commission. Uh, we've received 21 awards from NACO, including three best in category awards, um, six ACCG County Excellence Awards, plus an additional two honorable mentions. Uh, you've approved 104 uh, patrol vehicles for the Sheriff's Office. 17 different apparatuses for uh, Camden County Fire Rescue, and that goes without saying all of the upfit for 
all of those uh, vehicles and equipment. Eight years of adopted action agendas for the strategic planning sessions, uh, two loss negotiations, two successful SPLOS referendums, uh, maintaining an ISO rating of four, and of course, obtaining the launch site operator license from the FAA. Uh, the next slide uh, just really touches on some of the high level construction improvements. Um, many of these uh, were multi year projects, some even spanning before your uh, tenure on the uh, Board of Commissioners, but the Horse Stamp Church Road interchange on 95, expansion of the Rails to Trails project, the Lane Creek Bridge reopening right after uh, Hurricane Irma took that out uh, right here at exit 14, the Juvenile Justice Building expansion, the opening of Firehouse 18 and Tarboro, uh, the Kingsland Bypass, Bypass Phase 1 construction and completion, the Public Safety Radio Project Phase 1. Uh, we're continuing to do that. You've already approved several other items, and we've even got another item tonight. I mean, we're taking agenda. that to the next level. Of, That's uh, correct. The digital. Up. Yes, sir. That's right. Finally. Uh, the gun range opening, the additional funding for uh, various unpaved roads, the uh, um, approved construction for the new health department, which was a big time joint effort uh, from the county as well as the three municipalities. That was a big lift for uh, yeah. every entity involved. And then, of course, um, the resiliency center operation uh, for that five and a half million dollar grant that we got for that. That's one of the largest DCA grants that's been awarded throughout the state. Other operational enhancements that you have uh, been a significant significant part of is the mutual aid agreements and functional consolidation of fire rescue services redistricting on two different occasions grant funding for the st mary's river water uh, quality improvements the board of elections and registration uh, consolidation and creation uh, the recent job classification and compensation plan which netted over three million dollars for staff um, and their salary and benefits that was a significant um, improvement for them Again, the fund balance, making sure that we are achieving that minimum 25% uh, policy, and uh, that's been a work in progress, but we have achieved that uh, pretty recently and just trying to maintain that. The use of social media, uh, the implementation of the fire rescue recruit classes, that's been very successful under Chief Smith oh, yeah. and his, uh, his leadership. The Joint Development Authority centralized and funded from the county. Um, the introduction of a mobile app for uh, citizens to use, the uh, opening of the M McKinney Medical Center, the Camden County Kings Bay Joint Land Use Study, 20% flood insurance premium discounts that we give that are, each of our citizens in the unincorporated areas get to take part of, uh, the expansion of uh, employee clinic into Main Point Health and Wellness, new uh, Sunday alcohol sales that were approved, and obviously the new curbside collection contract. These are just some of the significant ones. There's a lot more that really um, could, we could absolutely sit here and highlight uh, for many, many, many more minutes, but. It's kind uh, of you to say that. Yeah, <laughs> I know we've gone through several uh, meetings and I know uh, each of you have uh, gone through several very difficult conversations that we've had from time to time and really put up with um, a lot of uh, just you know, really taking time away from your family. And we just want to thank you all uh, for your leadership, everything that you've done. I do have two plaques here, uh, one for each of you. Um, I'll start with, uh, we'll just do it in order of district. So Commissioner Clark, um, his years of service are from 2011 till present. Uh, but during that time, he has served as the vice chairman from 2014 to 2015, and as well as 2017. And I'll read this plaque and, and I'll, uh, read the number of years of service from Chairman Blunt, but with our greatest appreciation, we hereby present Commissioners uh, Chuck Clark as well as Chairman Gary Blunt um, for their, with great honor, appreciation and recognition for your 12 years of loyal and dedicated service to the citizens of Camden County. And for Chairman Blunt, years of service are from 2011 to present. He's been the Vice Chairman uh, for 2016, 2018, 2019, and 2020 and then the chairman from 2021 till this year. So if you would, we'd like to have you all come down, recognize you, take a photo, just say thank you. Sure. <clears throat> there. I think you want to have to. I got one to the archives. Appreciate the embellishment. 
Sure. sure. Sean, you looked at all the long winded phone calls. We'll get to you. Oh. <laughs> I guess the only thing that I would add to that, mm. speaking for myself, I will say since I've been on here, I've had the pleasure of working with great staff. Uh, who really, who really puts the uh, time and effort and energy into it? We we've, we've had uh, we've been very fortunate, and I think we've right now probably got the best staff I think we've ever had. Uh, I've worked with everyone over the years, and you know we've had some great hires. Been very fortunate, but our staff is really exceptional. And uh, they they make us look better, uh, quite honestly, very much so. And I just want to uh, let all the staff know that it's been really great for me working with you guys. I've, I've, that was one of the enjoyable parts of it is I knew I could depend on the staff that we had, you know, and I, I you know, and. It, and Sean, we got him finally broke in and trained up. He'll do. He'll do great. Uh, we were very pleased to uh, find find Sean making his way back to us. That was, I think, uh, I think not just us, but I think the staff was all grateful about that. And I think moving forward, you want to you want to you wanna leave things as good or better than when you found them. And I have no doubt in my mind that when I started in 11, I, I know at this point we're leaving the county and staff better than when I found it. Not that it was horrible then, but I, I, I think we've certainly, you know, made made improvements along the way. And I know the county financially and in every aspect is. So I'll end it with that. And I've enjoyed working with all the commissioners. I, I, I've. I can tell you now over the last 12 years, I've, I have to think back on some of the ones that's come and gone, but I can honestly say that all the commissioners that I've worked with, I, I never doubted for a minute that their true heart and true interest, uh, what was best for Camden County. I don't, I never had the feeling that I had to combat that, you know, someone else any goofy agendas or self-serving. Uh, I, I, I have no doubt, and that's one of, that made working on this commission, I know Chuck and I have talked about it, working on this commission much more enjoyable. Where, you know, we may not always agree, but you got five different people up here. And uh, you know, we, we've had our differences, but I knew that if I'm disagreeing with one of the commissioners on, I knew that he was coming from a place that he felt like he was doing what he perceived and was best for the county. And that was what was the motivation behind that. And I never doubted that with any of my commissioners that I've worked with thus far. And for that, I thank all the commissioners and these guys here. I think moving forward, you know, I, I know that I know three that's moving forward. You'll be in good shape and hopefully the ones coming in will will get in and, and do it a good job as well. So. Anything you want to say, big buddy? I think you covered it all. <laughs> um, I'll just make it. You can say it again. I'll just make it short. Best staff in the state of Georgia. Y'all hear me that? Yeah. Yep. You can't be doing stuff like that. I've had heart surgery. I'll start crying with you, big buddy. <laughs> All right, moving on to our next presentation.
thank you, Sean, for putting that together. And the ones that really put it together, whoever you are, I appreciate it. Because <laughs> I know darn well he hadn't dug it up. So thank you. You know, but you, 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 you got to present it. So anyhow, moving forward, uh, we got a presentation here from uh, one of our fine staff department heads, Mr. Barkley. Good evening, commissioners. And I enjoyed working with both of you, so I'm going to miss you both. Uh, trash truck enforcement and litter prevention. Um, just wanted to give you an update because we discussed this uh, uh, strategic planning last year and made a part of it. Uh, so we wanted to let you know where we're at, what we're doing still uh, moving forward. We talked about the state law and the state roads going into the landfill. Um, they're all enforceable. Uh, if any debris falls off your vehicle, I can't tell you how it needs to be secured, whether it's tarped, strapped, or bundled, or inside a container vehicle, uh, but you're not allowed to lose it. So uh, so with the help of uh, DOT, law enforcement, and what we're doing, we're hoping that we make some great improvements, and I think we have. So um, like I said, this is a high priority, and once we started doing it and everything, we we really improved what we were doing with our numbers and different things. And and Scott, if you, uh, we turned this guy away after three times of asking him to do the right thing. He would not, so we turned him away. And he came back with a tarp in about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, ran down to Folkestone Hardware or someplace and got one. He uh, called in, huh? He, he had to if he wanted to come to our place. So um, next, Scott. Um, now you see him coming in like this. Uh, I can't believe the number of uh, trash trailers we get like this for pickup trucks. Um, we get a large number coming into the MSW and the CND, and they all seem to be following the rules and regulations of what they're doing. So uh, the commercial vehicles, uh, with the help of Mr. Bowright and getting the new uh, curbside contract, it's really helped improve also those new trucks that they got there out on the streets. Uh, if you want to make somebody mad, don't pick up their garbage, and then they're going to take it out in the county someplace. So uh, with them picking up curbside and everything and helping us out, it really helps improve it. So uh, these type of trailers are still coming in from the residents. We don't get near as many of them untarped. And next, Scott, um, now you see them like that. They're all coming in. I just happened to glance out the door today several times, and. Even though a guy had a couple of couches, he had a tarp and a strap and everything else on it. So, so they're getting the word. So what we're finding though, is that uh, still 20% of the uh, county residents or uh, everybody are still not following it. They, they, they just don't wanna, they're either new and don't know and we educate them and train them or they just don't wanna follow it. If we know who they are and we, we know the repeats, then you know we'll, we'll kind of hinder them next time saying, you're not coming back unless you put a tarp on it or a strap or something. The other part of it is, is that the out of county, for some reason, if you come with from Florida, it's not near as many, but they're, they're up to about 90% tarping and everything. So I guess they got more jurisdictions to go through and uh, before they get to us. And I think Florida, especially when you cross over the border right there, sometimes they're, they're a little more apt to come get you if you're littering on their highway. So um, that's good, Scott, keep going. Just showing the numbers, we're still doing it. We're doing a lot of cleanups, uh, working with communities and different things. I think we've helped this, um, the St. Mary's River Keepers three different times. Uh, we're out there, Commissioner Casey and I were out there helping out quite a bit uh, in the spring. And then they had a couple more. They had some private ones and different things and City of St. Mary's had it. But we still got our signs up, we're still enforcing it. Uh, we're still educating uh, the residents. Uh, commercial trucks, um, uh, Mr. Boatwright actually called me here about a month or so ago and told me about a leaf and limb truck coming in. So, and his excuse was, and it, the vendor's no longer with the, the city, but he, he said it was broke. I said, what? Fix it. So, so, so working with them. So if there's any, um, that was my update. I just want to see if there's any uh, questions y'all may have and what we're doing and what we could do. Uh, going forward. I can't say that I have. Uh, I think uh, I, it's good to know that I know we were having a good bit of trouble with trash pulling off the trucks going up and down the highway. I'm assuming that has significantly dropped. Yes, it has uh, quite a bit. Well, There's still some out there. Don't get me wrong, but I compared to where we were. In, you know, he raising three boys, you big one, trust me, the other two going to buy in in a hurry. 
So you so, so that one guy you turned away three times, he's told fifty people you go up there with it out tarped in, and you just you just have to keep pressing it. And not trying to be jerks about it. You want to take the trash, but Right. Yeah, you you know, I've I've seen it blowing off and and admittedly mm -hmm. I've hauled stuff up there not tarped either. So Yeah. And, and the probably the biggest thing we're seeing too is that even though they have a tarp, they try to overfill the vehicle. Well, know, that no they'll say, Oh, I got a tarp on it, you know, but or sometimes when they leave, you know, it could be stuck in the container. Yes. Wild. So. Yeah, that, that does happen quite a bit. So uh, it's been dry here lately, but yeah, it does. And also on their wheels and stuff when they come out of the landfill sometimes, and we'll have to get out there and, and uh, clean up the road with that type of stuff. So, so the curb sites. Just a question on curbside. Is it working well now? As far as I know, it's working very well. Yes, sir. Our, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now, but our number of complaints have significantly dropped. I've, I've not heard anybody. No, we, we, I know we Lana used to get quite a few. And, uh, and if we do get complaints, we can always check those trucks. They're coming to the landfill. We know which ones they are. And, and we don't have those, we don't have those trucks leaking running up down the roads either. Right. If we do get that complaint, though, we can pull them over at the landfill and we can look at the seals and, and make sure the tailgates are all. But they're all pretty good size or uh, pretty new trucks. And, um, and this new company takes pride in what they do. So it does help us out quite a bit. All right. Appreciate the uh, presentation. All right. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Let's bring us to our first public comment section. Comments regarding items featured on the agenda. Uh, is there anyone registered? Yes. I I do have quite a few. Okay. We're um, gonna, we're gonna hold them to about we're gonna hold you to about three minutes. Okay. The first comment was actually submitted written, and I was gonna read it quickly for the record because it is fairly short. Okay. Is Miss Jessica Feely here? She's not okay. Uh, Miss Jessica Feely of St. Mary's writes, I am writing in full support of the agenda item to provide funding for the Thicol Memorial Project Museum operating expenses. Please vote in favor of preserving this important story in Camden County history and honoring the men and women who lost their lives in service to their country. The families affected by this horrific and avoidable tragedy tragedy continue to carry the burdens of this traumatic loss. Every Camden County resident should know the story of the Woodbine Thicol chemical plant and the heroism so many of our neighbors exercised that day. The Thicol Memorial Project Museum is a treasure and wealth of important information. If any member of the Board of Commissioners has not visited the museum and had a tour, please do so at your earliest opportunity. And then our next speaker will be Ms. Janie Everett. Well, there you are. Good evening. My name is Janie Everett and I'm CEO and president of the Thigh Call Memorial Project. And um, I'm just here this evening to ask the board to really um, consider our expenses to run the museum. There are many aspects of this project. The museum is a fruit of our labor. Um, we have to research the history. Um, many times it comes to us, we have artifacts that have to be preserved and displayed, um, cataloged. And over the last nine years, we've done quite a few things um, to build this museum, to expand the history, to remember and honor everyone um, involved in the tragedy and people that helped us. Um, this past weekend, we were involved with Nassau County, uh, two of the people killed at the Thicol chemical plant, the two sisters, um, they had two fire units respond and a hospital to stand up. The volunteer fire department, we got word that the roof had caved in and their artifacts were in danger. And um, we asked permission to um, retrieve those items, have them stored so that they can be examined and preserved for the museum. So it's not just where we are now, all jurisdictions that responded, that provided us help, or that as part of the history, we work with that. But in order for us to survive, we need a place to have the museum. We need our expenses, uh, help with the expenses. And just trying to figure that out has been very hard. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Ms. Jane. Anyone else, Kate? Yes. Mr. Seals. 
Mr. Who? He's right there. Yeah. In reference to um, the Thai Call Museum, uh, for one who has served in two wars and needed these guys who were doing this job over here at Thai Call, um, I didn't know at the point in time, but I mean, it was disastrous from what I was made to understand. After all research, that's true. And Miss um, G, you know, she is the one that's pretty much doing this, the museum portion. And I'm looking at the agenda. You're all going to be trying to consider funding. I was here about maybe four or five months ago. And it started a little bit about that. And the funding thing was mentioned. However, it seems as though we're just kicking the can down the road. We need to just kind of get it all the way funded. And you know, Commissioner Blunt, you you came when you you did your thing, you spoke, and I appreciate that what you're doing. But now you're not gonna be here next time around. I was hoping that um, you know, you and Commissioner Clark would have got this thing under wraps before you guys vacate your positions. Because you don't know about two guys coming in, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna get keep kicking that can down the road further and further in terms of funding? And I think I'm, called, I'm here to represent and try to figure that one out because I'm not too sure what's going on with this whole thing. And I mean, it needs to be done. And I really appreciate if you guys would, would do it. I mean, she's been doing it for like 10 plus years and begging for money. That shouldn't be going like, it should be done like that. It's kind of old. And like I said, I'm representing because I mean, I've been in two wars, the Vietnam and there's a storm war. I know what it likes is liked too support that kind of effort. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Ms. Emma Gibbs. My name is Emma Gibbs, and I was one of the first 55 women to be employed at Thicol, and I've been out there 36 years. The day of the explosion, I was out there, so I'm one of the survivors. When Ms. Everett came back from the service, her mother came to me and asked me would I help her try to bring these patriots a recognition. And I told her, yeah, we have been working and working and working trying to keep the museum door open. We got, we were selling dinners and uh, a lot of stuff to keep it open. We had donations when people come by and they give us donations. But it's a shame that most of the people that come by wasn't here. They moved in and they happened to see the museum name up there and they come by and they want the history. They give us donations sometimes. But the people right here in Camden, they seem to don't care. So we are asking you to help us keep this door open because everything we have had here, and I've been to a meeting, everything been approved, but they call on a consideration. So I want you all to think about that and help us keep the door open. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Terry Keller. Terry Keller, 156 Woodhaven Drive, Kingsland. Good evening, gentlemen. This is um, from Taxpayers Against Camden Spaceport from November 30th. I was going to sing this to the tune of the 12 Days of Christmas. Stop you right there. I did not. Is there something on the agenda involving that? Um, this has to do with the comprehensive plan. What? Uh, number five. Of oh, the capital improvement element. Yeah, of the comprehensive plan. Is it, it it's not in the comprehensive plan, is it? The spaceport no. is part of the comprehensive plan.
Uh, not to my knowledge. Yeah, I see Joey in the background nodding no, so no. That's why I said this, this, this CIA doesn't have anything to do with that. Oh, so do I need to wait till the second public be, comment? That would be correct. Alrighty. Okay, I'll call you up for the next one. Thank Sorry. you. Mr. Ricky Manning. Rick Manning from Bullhead. Uh, I'm really up here to address you about the Thiokol Memorial Project. This has been on consideration, still on consideration, and it, it's it, this has been dragging on for so long. This is an important part of history in our county. Y'all can approve funds, and it's all in here. Approve, approve, approval, and here's all consideration. Y'all approve funds for everything with no public comments, but you ignore the public comment from the people that want this. This is museum is our history part of it. You just spent money on uh, tax money on a barbe free barbecue dinner at the gun range, a business bought with tax money. But you keep considering and pushing to the side something the county residents want and have worked for. They worked their sales for this, put their time and effort into it. And I would like for y'all to actually really consider what the people are saying. And I'll talk to you about the gun range at the second part. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? That is all I have registered. Is there anyone who did not register desiring to speak to the commission on something on the agenda? If you would come up and give us your name and address, please. Yes. Yeah. Commissioners, my name is Phyllis Rome. And I am a, a resident of Camden County for seven and 72 years, and I also worked at the Thakal plant. And um, my mom's sister got killed out there. And um, we used to work all the time out there. They were hire fires, fires. But this particular day, I was on evening shift. And um, but when I went out there and seen all the bodies laying everywhere, it was really, really hurtful. And everybody that worked out there, we were family. Black, white, whatever, we were family. We knew each other and we respected each other. So I would like for y'all to don't consider, just help us out. Like I say, I'm 72 years old. 19th of November, we were selling catfish dinners <laughs> to try to help keep uh, Thigh Call Museum open. It shouldn't be. All of us are over 65, 70, 70 years old. But we had loved ones that got killed, loved ones. Some people right now are friends walking around with no arm. I mean, it, it's, it's hurtful. That happened right here. We were making trip flares for Vietnam at that time. So we should be considered. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else? All right, seeing none, we'll move into our regular agenda. Brings up item one, uh, City of St. Mary's. Did you have anything else to say? This is the thing we had the uh, work session on the TAD for district, uh, allocation district two. Uh, if, can't, if commission has any questions or anything, I'd be more happy to try and address them this time. Does anybody have any questions for? Uh, Mr. Horton at this time. Does anyone have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we table this item until we get further information in a in basically have a joint work session to come together to, to consider this item. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right. All right, this time uh make a comment I, I think the board feels like it's so it's like Santa Claus it's a worthy project uh, and we can certainly see the benefits of it and it's not something that we're saying no to I, I, I mean I know me personally I would like to understand better about what I would be committing to in this and I think the guys that the numbers guy 
I know how numbers work. Which way do I need to make it look? I can, we, it, I, you know, and I'm not saying that's what happened, but we know how it works. I just want to, I just think that, you know, I think would be a good time to have, you know, possibly a joint work session. You know, of course, I won't be here, but uh, with, with the board and St. Mary's and, and the uh, school board. So well, everybody, everybody's committing on it. You know, everybody apparently is doing their own looking into it. But I do think there would be some joint work sessions of some kind, as big as this is, to where you can sit down and freely talk about and have some good conversation, questions answered, asking, and everyone get a comfort level with it. I think that's really more uh, of the driving force behind it at this point. Anyone else have any? Uh, yeah, I'll just take long. I mean, I think it's a really worthy project. I think, you know, it could definitely benefit the area, the community, the exit, you know, the, the gateway to our community. Um, you know, I was, and I know this has been going on for a while. I was kind of caught up to speed a few days ago, so I haven't had as much time as I would like to, to research into some of these things to, you know, as Commissioner Blunt was talking about. Um, but I'm also not opposed to, you know, if we have to have a special call meeting. I know time is of the essence and getting this done by the end of the year. So, you know, I'm willing to commit to to try to expedite this as much as we can. I just feel like I need a, you know, a little bit of research done to kind of realizing what what all this project entails and you know. All right. And I know Commissioner ahead. Blunt, you requested certain documentation and that sort of thing. Okay. Is there anything else that the commission would like to have? Prior to, I mean, me personally, I, I would like to have the, the developer's agreement, and uh, I'd like to see what St. Mary's is going to be approving. One, two, I, I would like to have the opportunity for our administrator, a county member, Mr. Boatwright, and Mr. Meyer, and Ms. Gonzalez, and uh, where is he hiding at? I don't know if I'm in here, Brian. Anyway. He's there, there. there you are. You were sitting in the middle. Anyway. When is the city going to approve this? City slated for the 19th. 19th. <clears throat> they're looking December to vote that. Monday they're looking night. to do it on the 19th. I say we have a, a special call meeting for the 20th. Who looked at? Uh, that's a week. We can get us the documentation. That gives us a week to, to look it over. I don't know that going to give staff enough time to kind of. Well, I will say for the rest of the week and for Monday next week, we'll be tied up with either strategic planning or new commissioner orientation and all of those events are pretty much full day events. I, I will say that at least for myself. That's just through the 19th. That's through the 19th and then the 20th will be an opportunity for. I mean, if you want to do the joint work session. With the board of education, the board of commissioners, and the city, uh, let us work on it, and you know we'll reach out to them. You know we'll we'll reach out. I'll call I'll call uh, Doc Tucker, and uh, you know it, it ain't like we got to have you know we have, it means it won't come obviously, and I'll reach out and see if there's a time we can kind of put together because I know that I've got a sick granddaughter that I haven't seen in a while, and if it's hair lip trying, I'm going. And it's probably going to be next week. Uh, so, to be clear, are we talking about a, a joint work session or a special? I, I, I think I, I think maybe a joint work session where everybody can kind of air it out, and then if if the uh, board desires to have a special call meeting to take action, we certainly can. I mean, we can do that between Christmas and New. I think as long as it's done before the end of the year is what you're concerned about, am I? Uh, as quick as possible, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, how much notice have we got to have to notify the special board meeting? 24 hours, 20, but yeah. you also need to take into consideration the county is closed Friday, Monday, Tuesday for Christmas the following week. So the 28th, 29th, and 30th would be the only days we could hold a special call meeting. Well, if we, we, we did it on the 28th, I wouldn't make you too mad, would it? Or 29th? I'm flexible, sure. You would need to have the work session prior to that. I understand that. Thank you, Captain. Office. You're welcome. And I think just commission's benefit. I think the school board, um, they're they've got one little component they're trying to work out, but other than that, they're I'm hearing they're good. 
Have they taken action tonight so far? They have one little thing to work out. Okay. Yeah, what I'm understanding, back. they're good. And that's what I understand. It's it's a it's a legal one small legal. I get it. And I, I and I want to exchange these thoughts and the, the benefits of everyone who looked into these things and their analyses of them. Uh, so anyhow, let's. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would have I would not have a problem whatsoever with the work session and doing a call meeting. Do it both. Of so we can have yeah time. we can have a work session, and as far as the county is concerned, and we can roll into a, a meeting right after it. That's not a problem. Do it all. We're all the gonna time be here, time. so we'll which, do it all the same. Could time. be on the twentieth right after y'all take action on it. Whatever, whenever we can. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Right. Yeah. All right. So anyway, all right. We have first and second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Any opposed? One opposition. That would be Commissioner Casey. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Huh? I like a rebel. That's all right. I like a rebel. Uh, I think Katie's got us another calendar here. Uh, which uh, I think it's irrelevant for me to look at it, but I'll bring it up. Uh, everybody had a chance to look at it. Laney, Trevor, Ben. All the meetings are scheduled on the first and third Tuesdays of every month, and we will only hold one meeting the month of July and December due to holidays. So moved. Second. second. All right, we have a first, second. All those in favor? You got yourselves a calendar. That brings us to item three. Uh, appointment to the Cannon County Joint Development Authority. Uh, we've had quite a few, as we often do in these type of things, we've had quite a few folks who are willing to participate and give up their time and energies and effort. Uh, at this time, uh, could I get a motion on this item? I'd like to appoint Gary, Chairman Blunt. All right, we have a first, we get a second. I'll second that. All right, just for clarification purposes, my term ex expires December 31. This this does not take effect until January 1. So, uh, all right, we have a first and a second. I'll abstain, so anyone, all those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? All right, so it's a uh, tied vote, so it's a no vote. So do you have another nomination? Hold on, wait a second. What? You and Trevor voted no? Yes. Okay. All right, do we have a new nomination? Well, one of you no voters, you have got somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Jump out there. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Royce Proctor. I'll second that. It'd be good. All right, we have a first and second. All those in favor, raise your hand. All right, Royce, you're the new victim. Good luck. I'm sure you'll. I'm sure you'll do well. All right, mm -hmm. we've got uh, item four: uh, reappointment to the Cannon County, County Board of Assessors. For districts two and district four, I would like to make a motion to reappoint Liz Johnson. To my all right, and then I would make an uh, okay. We'll go ahead and act on yours. I'll second that. All all those in favor? Clear okay. Or I was just, is this a reappointment to a current? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. And both of the um, commissioner elects have indicated that they wish to reappoint these individuals. Gotcha. I've spoken to them both. Okay. All right. That was Sorry. yes. Yeah. All those in favor? Motion carries. And I would uh, reappoint to the board of session my nomination, Mr. Burleson. Uh oh. Can I get a second on that? All right, we have first and second. All those in favor? Motion carries. All right. Uh, go back now. I 
Mr. Yakabachi. Good evening, commissioners. I'm asking for the adoption of the fiscal year 2023 capital improvement element of a comprehensive plan tonight. The Coastal Regional Commission, as well as the DCA, have approved the draft on this. So the next step would would be for you all to uh, approve the final draft. All right. Could I get a motion on this side, please? Motion to approve. Second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Ms. Cassie Ms. Carpin is going to be presenting um, for Ms. Long's absence. Okay. Hi, um, I'm Cassie Turpin. I'll be speaking on behalf of Sarah Long. Um, this request is to approve the annual progress report for the multi jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan for Camden County. Uh, this is just a continuation on the community rating system. All righty. Thank you, everyone, for me with this. We're going to get a motion on this item. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Does anyone have any questions? I have a first and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, ma'am. All right, this time we'd like to get a motion to adjourn the regular meeting to convene the Solid West Authority. So moved. Second. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? We're now in the Solid West Authority agenda meeting. Uh, I see no amendments. Got to get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries. You've seen, have an opportunity to read the September 6th meeting minutes. Are there any corrections, additions, changes? If not, could I get a motion, please? Motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. All right. We have a first and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. This brings us to our first Solid Waste Authority public comment. Is anyone registered, Ms. Bishop? Anyone desire to speak concerning the Solid Waste Authority agenda? Seeing none. Uh, Kevin and I are tag teaming it. Okay. I know you're not Kevin. I'm not Kevin. I'm not. All right. I see you got some budget amendments, though. Uh, yes. This is uh, requesting your approval of budget amendments to the Solid Waste Authority fiscal year 23 budget. Uh, it's a redu overall reduction in the budget of about $650,000 and uh, an increase in proceeds carried forward of about $1.8 million. And this is all due to um, the loss of a major uh, customer at the landfill. Uh, the lost revenue, um, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry about that. Um, some of the reductions that we are making to it is salaries, and that is the salary reduction is only not filling vacant positions. The four um, positions that's vacant. Pardon? The four positions that's currently unfilled. Correct. Correct. And I know that Mr. Barkley is here if you have any additional questions. Uh, just out of curiosity, I see the, the, the proceeds carried forward, meaning Fund balance. Fund balance. Now, Correct. Pulling, uh, we're taking 3.5 million out at this point in time. Correct. For all the capital improvements and capital projects. Well, I understand. Now, where does that leave the fund balance after the 3.5 projected? It's under two at that point. Eileen, I know you know what it means. Yeah, I know exactly what it means. Fellas, all right. This no, I'm being captain obvious to a certain extent, but okay, I got gotcha. you. All right, uh, does anyone have any questions? For Ms. Gonzalez or Mr. Barkley? All right, well, seeing none, could I get a motion on this, uh, on this budget amendment for the Solid Waste Authority? Motion to approve. Second. All right, we got a first and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, this brings us to our final public comment section on the Solid Waste Authority. Does anyone have any comments related to it? Seeing none, uh, I'd like to get a motion to adjourn the Solid Waste Authority meeting and reconvene the regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners. So moved. 
Second. We have a first and second. All those in favor? Motion carries. We're now back in a regular meeting. And Ms. Gallus Gonzalez obviously knows she's up next. I am, and this is for the Board of Commissioners uh, consideration to approve the budget amendments for the Solid Waste Authority for fiscal year 23 as presented and discussed. I could get a motion on this item, please. Motion to approve. Second. We have first and second. All those in favor? Motion carries. All right. This brings us to our item eight uh, budget amendments. Yes, uh, this uh, budget um, amendment request is for consideration. You have all the details. It's, it affects several funds, the general fund, capital improvement fund, hotel, motel, um, and you have the details if you have any questions on that. Okay. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Gonzalez? Seeing none, could I get a motion on this item, please? Motion to approve. Second. Got a first and a second. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Lance, this brings us to our item 10. All right, good evening, commissioners. Uh, like so many others have already expressed, it's been a pleasure uh, watching you guys command this county and work together over my last three years. So it's been a pleasure. You will be missed. Um, I am here today to ask for uh, an approval to increase our employee boot reimbursement program from $80 to $100. Um, as you all may already know, the county does provide a boot that meets all the requirements for the departments uh, for safety, uh, support of the ankles, uh, puncture resistant, waterproof, uh, as many of our employees work out in the field. It's very important that they, uh, they stay safe and uh, trip and falls and slips are one of the most common injuries. So the reason behind this has been um, obviously the boot that we've been using is has become scarce uh, supply chain issues. Uh, prices have gone up as we've all experienced through um, through the last several years. And this program has not been updated for at least three to four years. So uh, with that being said, I would request that we uh, you approve from $80 to $100 for reimbursement. All right. Get a motion on this item, please. Motion to approve. Second. Comments? Hearing none. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Lance. Thank you. Mr. Chuck, Mr. Bill. Chuck only. Chuck <laughs> only. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Bill's at his uh, fire department Christmas party. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, I come before you this evening uh, to request the Board of Commissioners to consider the utilization of ARPA funds to fund 50% of the upgrade to the St. Mary's Mush Bluff radio site. Uh, the St. Mary's radio site system is currently a single 800 megahertz standalone system that doesn't technically, in an effective way, connect to the Camden County system. And because they're running 800 and we're running VHF, um, we've had to utilize what is called a, a kind of a software patch. And when you take two disparate systems and you try to join them with a makeshift uh, a patch, if you will, you're obviously going to have issues. And we've had issues the whole time. We all recognize that ultimately we've got to join these systems. Let's make them whole. It's in the county's uh, interest and it's in St. Mary's interest. I wanted to throw this slide up just because I wanted to give you a quick visual of where the towers are at. So uh, thinking northernmost is Waverly, Station 17, uh, coming back down south, Woodbine site. These are all 250-foot uh, recently completed towers. That was our SPLOS 7 project. These are state-of-the-art, microwave, failover capability, backup generator, very much hardened and, and very much high-tech. Coming down south, Station 15 in Browntown, another 250-foot tower. Site 4 at Gross Road, you may recall, is the legacy old tower that we don't even have good information on in terms of how that tower is constructed. It, it is obviously using dissimilar metals, and there's some fatigue in that 180-foot tower. We were successful in getting CDBG funding to build a brand new 300-foot tower in place of that tower. And uh, importantly, we'll be able to put another microwave on. These microwaves are backhaul. They're pushing data, right? As we move to the digital spectrum, it's going to become even more important. So it's a simulcast over IP protocol, but it's also a microwave backhaul. 
And finally, site five, and I, and I say site five because once we join in the Mush Bluff site for St. Mary's, located all the way out uh, you know, across from Crooked River area down there, that would become site five. Why is that important to us? It's important because it joins us up, right? We're embedded on the EMS side with their fire. We're all working together collaboratively. And at the end of the day, they're leaning forward to do 50% of the funding and we're doing 50% of the funding, which comes to 147,652.15. And so this was uh, racked and stacked as part of the ARPA projects at a previous board meeting and there was concurrence to move forward with us. So I'm asking for your approval for this agenda item. Yeah, I think we've obviously been over this and this is the, if I'm not mistaken, the final step. Yes, sir. In uh, getting our tower situation moving forward to the 800 megahertz. Yes, sir. And not only that, it's going to obviously enhance our coverage. Uh, right. Obviously in the Mush Bluff area and in the St. Mary's area. Uh, and obviously theirs, and not not to mention making the ability to communicate between the two uh, uh, less complicated. Right, and this is timely, Mr. Chairman, because we're we're allocating that CDBG funding to move ourselves to 800 megahertz. As we move to 800, and we've got the new tower, the new microwave going up at Gross Road and they lean forward to join their existing single site, which will become a site five for all of us, that just makes a lot of sense economically and most importantly, for the citizens that we serve, for our first responders, having critical, highly reliable public safety communication is paramount. Yeah, I, one thought, just remind me, uh, I, I know that they were using 800 megahertz. Is the is this tire going to be utilized with our VHF system at all? No, sir. They they've got a separate VHF system, so they really don't utilize our VHF. No, I meant I, I meant on site five. No, sir. Well, there no, sir. Be no VHF. And it wouldn't be necessary. And we don't need it. We, no, sir. We got the good redundancy still without it. Okay. And we are retaining, though, to your point, we're retaining our primary VHF, VHF oh, yeah. channels as we go forward. Right. Yeah. The, and, We'd have two systems. We got Correct. A, we got a backup system. Okay. Yeah, I think. Could to get a motion on this item? Motion to approve. Second. We have first and second. All those in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Hey, I want to take a quick opportunity, Mr. Blunt, Mr. Clark. Thank you for your leadership over the years. In my five-year tenure here, I've had outstanding support. I thank you very much for that. And, uh, <laughs> Mr. Clark, I'm going to miss your very intimate knowledge of every ditch and road and bridge that floods and bringing our attention to that, that was invaluable. Thank you. And, and pictures without titles. <laughs> yes. Right, you know that, exactly. you know that culvert? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's probably people here that can recognize those locations. That goes, I'm, I'm not that one of them. them that way. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. We, we'll enjoy, we, I've enjoyed working with you as well. You have been a tremendous asset in the uh, EOC. Thank you. You're welcome, Matt. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. I bring for you tonight a request for approval for the NSP Park Services LLC to repair and restore the place structures at Howard Peoples Park. Uh, this is part of the uh, the greater uh, improvements to the countywide park system that we approved in uh, fiscal year 23. Uh, back when we approved it, um, the estimated cost in working with the contractor was approximately $75,000. In working with that same contractor, we've been able to get it down uh, to 44,856 and 64 cents. Um, it's the same uh, refurbishments. Uh, we just had some discounts at the end of the year based on timing. Um, additionally, uh, other items that we are in the process of completing with the county parks. Uh, we've just finished with the pressure washing and touch up paint of the Brown Town and Maple Ford parks. Um, I'm also working with the North Camden Accident Association. I uh, met with them last week uh, for improvements of the Maple Ford Park and what they would like to see up there. Um, <clears throat> we're seeking a grant. Uh, funding here in the spring and the summer uh, for the Browntown Wilderness Park um, boardwalk to uh, restore and improve that boardwalk uh, so it can be used, used by the community once again uh, without, you know, worry of, you know, falling into the swamp. Um, <clears throat> we're also gathering quotes for the replacements of Harriet's Bluff uh, Community Park, Cornelia Jackson here in town, and the Charlie Easterling Park, uh, not just to replace but to upgrade the Charlie Easterling Park um, here on uh, 17. 
Uh, and I just got the approval for uh, the county park mulch, um, and that should be within or installed in the next two weeks. Uh, so I seek your approval tonight uh, for the uh, award of NSP Park Services uh, to repair Howard People's Park. Well, Mr. Bent, you, Mr. Dink, you must be a little bit psychic because I can assure you, I was going to ask you, I was going to point out that I figured this much. is just a part of an ongoing process of which we, you know, initiated six months ago. Six months ago, yep. Uh, to bring all our parks up to. Uh, condition they should be in something our children can play on and not have to worry about falling through right and uh this is just one one step of it there's more to come yes sir all right could i get a motion on this item please motion to approve second we have first and second all those in favor motion carried yeah. unanimously thank you gentlemen thank you sir let's bring this to item 12 county county board of commissioners uh this is for the thigh memorial project you know, Ms. Cheney, you, you came up here and did one of your, your talks, and I can't remember which one it was, but I told you it was by far your best, and you need to stick with that one. <laughs> that, that that was a very enlightening, and, you know, uh, uh, and I can see the benefit of it, for, you know, for tourism, for bringing visitors in, which, you know, from folks out here, you have a lot of that coming in now, which is amazing. Uh, surrounding counties and other areas that are, you know, folks that have family that were here that that this is impacted. And so I think this is a a great use of uh, some of our hotel motel monies. And I, you know, it's one of the things we told you on your last meeting that we would like to try to come to come and do something for you to help you cover your overhead. Uh, now, uh, I know we've had some discussion, you know, kind of scattered about on it. And uh, I, what I'll do is the thing I remember in our in one of our discussions where we went over your financials. We obviously can't cover your whole operating expenses for the year. Uh, we can we can we can get you enough to kind of keep you operating. Uh, and I wanted to do it in this manner because this is ongoing. You know, spending ARPA funds or something like that, that's a bucket that's when it runs out, it's gone. It's a one shot deal. And this way you'll have, uh, and there will be something grown up, you know, when we get through tonight. Uh, you'll have ongoing funding that you'll understand. So, with that being said, you know, I, I had personally considered, I know what we we're talking about, and I've made mention of this to some of the other guys. Uh, I was looking at the 20 to 25 range a year. And uh, I, I mean, I'm open to someone making an emotion uh, as to what they feel like it ought to be, and we'll take action on it. Well, start with a motion to discuss or what? Well, just somebody can make a motion to discuss it or make a motion on a, on a dollar amount. I think I think that's really what I think that's what she's looking for. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I would make a motion. Uh, I wouldn't have any issues whatsoever with the 20,000 provided we get a plan worked up between uh, the oh, county yeah. and the Tycho Memorial Museum uh, and get annual reporting and everything back and the funding lasts as long as the museum is active and working. And I'll second that motion to continue the discussion on it. You know, currently the plan is, you know, we, we haven't we hadn't had time to put together a MOU or agreement and we will do something like we do with the Kingsland Visitor Center and the St. Mary's and to sort some agreement like that, which has reporting. You know, just tell us what you're doing. Give us some new numbers. And I know you're doing that. So uh, I think that's what you're referring to. Yep. And so I'm sure Mr. Boatwright and Mr. Myers can get together and get something drafted up that uh, could take action on yeah, in the, you know, either in the upcoming year or if we have another meeting, you know, we can if they get it done or whatever it's done. But I think right now we can make a motion to commit to that, to uh, funding you $20,000 a year uh, right now. Uh, 
And of course, obviously, should the, buyer, the board desire prospectively to change that, they can. When I say change it, they can, you know, I think you'll have the commitment as long as that uh, tax is in place. I don't know how long. All those commitments usually run. I don't remember. I believe they're year to year. The year agreements year. that we have. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyhow. So we have a motion before us and uh, to go twenty thousand dollar funding out of the uh, uh, hotel motel tax. All those in favor? Motion carries. All right. Now that brings us to the calendar. I think we've uh, beat that one up. Uh, well. Depending on what's decided on a joint work session well, and we'll have to announce that a we'll special call it. meeting, we will announce that. Um, otherwise, our next regular meeting will be on January 3rd, 2023, and it will start at 530 with a special call meeting to swear in the newly elected commissioners. Okay. Followed by a regular meeting at 6. Right. All right, this brings us to our final public comment section. Is anyone registered? Did Mr. Boatwright have any comments? Oh yes, I did have. Did a I few. Skip? Yeah, I did have. I'm a few sorry, comments. buddy. I That's skipped right. you. Yeah, no worries. My finger rolled after up too all that quick. You yeah, I know. After, after everything I just bragged <laughs> on you for. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to remind the commission that on Thursday, the fifteenth at three thirty p.m., we are having our employee milestone anniversary event. So if you can make that, please try to do that. Uh, we're going to be recognizing several of our staff members. Uh, one has achieved forty years, a forty-year anniversary. Um, he's actually with Public Works. Many of you know him, Robert Strickland. So we've got several others that have uh, very other uh, various length of times um, of service awards. Also, Chief uh, Smith and uh, Deputy Chief uh, Boyette, they both achieved their Georgia Fire Chief certification. Chief Smith was a recertification, but Chief Boyette, I know you're, you're here in the um, audience this evening. So congratulations on your uh, Georgia Fire Chief certification. Uh, that's a big time award. And then the last uh, but not least is I uh, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas this year. I hope that each and all of your families are safe. I'm very excited uh, to announce we have an addition to our family. So a uh, little baby girl and you know we were out uh, a couple weeks but uh, very very excited to have uh, her here and welcome her to our family. So thank you. all You'll have your first Christmas with your little baby. That's right. And she's doing well now, and I know y'all all back home. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Mr. Buckwright, you know, hope everybody has safe holidays and great holidays and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year and all that. So uh, now that brings up any additional public comments. I do have two people registered. Oh, we got, hang on just a second, we got two registered. It's going to do the first two registered, and then we'll okay. um, open the floor. Ms. Keller, would you like to come back up? Ben, you know you're going to be last. Between New Year's Day and October 27th of this year, $668,000 of our tax dollars have been spent on lawyers for Spaceport Camden. That's $2,235 a day of our hard-earned money wasted on a fight to bring a dead project back to life. The breakdown of this money, $60,000 to haul Booth Smith to fight our petition and landslide referendum vote all the way to the Georgia Supreme Court. $88,000 to Robbins, Alloy, Belafonte, Littlefield to sue Union Carbide to force them to sell us their property that we voted not to buy. $45,000 to Venable to represent our Camden County, Georgia government commissioners in a federal lawsuit against the Federal Aviation Administration. $257,000 to Holland and Knight to force Union Carbide to sell their property that Camden County is legally prohibited from buying. $189,000 to Hunter McLean to defend our commissioners for hiding spaceport documents and violating the Georgia Open Records Act countless times. This same firm is also defending the infamous traveling sport spaceport salesman, Andrew Nelson. 
$14,000 to Walker, Hulbert, Gray, and Moore to defend a probate Judge Sweat from our county commissioner's lawsuit against him for following the law. Judge Sweat had to have an outside lawyer since his own lawyer, John Myers, was the one suing him on behalf of the county. $11,988 to Morris, Manning, and Martin for things we don't know. So uh, $668,000, not to mention the $12 million spent in total. Uh, $12 million could go a long way towards the Science Hall Museum, towards the Woodbine Public Library, or towards a business that produces actual jobs. There, this is, would be the 13th spaceport, and these spaceports do not really produce jobs. They hardly launch rockets even. And so uh, you guys all started out with the best of intentions for the county. I know you did. And so I ask you if you could just please stem the bleeding now and let's um, let's stop the waste of our tax dollars for this, the spaceport, because you can't launch rockets over occupied private property. And that's where they would go, go over Cumberland Island and Little Cumberland Island. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ricky Manning. Hi, right, it's me again. Uh, I'm here to address the gun range. Y'all put no thought into nothing out there. I can't even walk my dogs. I'm, I'm, I'm two miles away from there. But all that banging and framing that echoes through them swamps, my dogs won't even go walking when they get out there doing that. Not to mention what you're doing to the wildlife. You're driving away people that come to this Georgia, spend their money to hunt and carry on. 26, I can tell you, I can name you 26 people that's done left, the hunting clubs around there. That's revenue. They spend their money in this place. They spend their money in the state. They buy out of state license. We done went through this stuff with the bird bombs out there, Laney. We had to petition and we got rid of the bird bombs out there at the landfill. Are we going to do this again? Address me. We need sound barrier walls. Y'all need to address it and need to do it soon or the petition will get started. And the wildlife conservation groups will come visit you. Either way, y'all want to do this. If that was a private entity, y'all would have required it. The zoning committee would have required them to have something to sound suppression. Now, I can play any recording from sitting on my porch if you want me to. Of the booming and the framing that echoes all out through them woods. Now, either do something about it or if we will get something done, we'll draw up the same exact same petition we had for the bird bombs out there, and we'll get the same groups involved. And, you know, let's make it light on ourselves. You shouldn't have been in a business with taxpayers' money to begin with. You open up a business to create jobs for, for a government. Every one of y'all run off a conservative platform, but you're making bigger and bigger government, and then you're not even doing it properly. So let's see if we can get that address and do it sooner. I, I will get the same thing we did with the bird bombs started, and it will be right after the first of the year. So I'm asking you to get something done about it. Thank you, sir. All right, is there anyone else? No, sir. Is anyone else retiring to Smith. Come on up, sir. Brett Seagulls, 816 Riverview Drive. Mr. Brandt, aren't you a Vietnam vet man? I know. Two tours. Two tours. I you told me that. Players. I use them. Mr. Blunt, you said twenty to 25000 I was wondering why you didn't say 25000 We don't know how much revenue we're going to have coming in. We can't use anything that isn't tourism money. It could go up, but that's a starting point. So, okay, I don't have that information, so I'm, you know, I can't well, sit here. It just started, so we kind of really don't have it either. No. We got projections, but, you know, this is something that, you know, like I said, prospectively, the board can take action on it any time next year if they want to offer it. So, Which we did increase the rate, did we not? Yeah, right. We did, but you'll have to get your state rep, right? But you got, well, we, we, got, we, got we got, we got, we got the, we got the first phase. We got the first phase of first phase of it in, 
for the two percent and to get the the other one percent to bring it up to the same level that all the other whole other hotels and motels have in the, in the cities we have to go through state legislation to get that that's why we took action and, and moved with, took what we could get at first knowing that this was going to be a two-phase or two-pronged situation so that should <clears throat> excuse me that so you say give or take the other one percent should be in action sometimes next year is that what you're saying It'll be whenever, you know, I, we can't tell you that, just depends on when it, when it gets sent up to Atlanta and whenever they got to get it in there, you know, legislators, they got to get it put in. But, you know, we'll have, uh, I think it's like a, in, in it, uh, like a home rule, uh, this Myers. In it, like a home rule on that 1%, kind of, we kind of get preferential moving it through on that 1% for the hotel motel tax. It's got to be broken out in, in several different tranches. Uh, like the county set up. Okay. With the numbers we've got right now, but this this isn't an allowable expense. Right. So I meant we're we're going to take it to the next level. We got the two percent yeah, we, we took, that. and we're going to get the other one percent through the state. Got to go through the state legislature. Yes. Sir. And and that's that's pretty much a given. So it's it depends on when they vote for it in Atlanta, but it would be I, I would I'm confident that'd be sometime between. Uh, I don't know when they reconvene, but even soon January, sometime between when they when they uh, close, which would be in like April, if I'm not mistaken. So it'd be between then. So it so the twenty thousand right now is firm. Yes. That, See you next year. That's the point I was. That's the point I was leading to. I wanted to, you know, we'd had several discussions. I know all of us have, and you know, I wanted to get something started now. Appreciate it for now. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Is anyone else? It's iron. Good evening once again. Um, Janie Everett from Woodbine. Um, thank you all for your consideration of the Thack Hall Memorial Project funding. But I wanted to to ask you one more favor and and thank everyone that participated in the toy drive for the Head Start um, Daycare Center. You all created that um, Head Start Center by resolution. This is the resolution in um, 1971. Every county commissioner, every mayor in the county and the Board of Education. Now, since COVID, we've had a problem at the Head Start Center not only has Head Start program been closed in St. Mary's, what's happened up here in Woodbine is that they have the bus, they have the funding. Can somebody please tell us how to get a bus driver for these children? The parents still have to work and this is the children's first means of social interaction. Um, they not only learn their ABCs, they learn you know, behavior, how to interact with other people. And so if anybody has any ideas about um, how to go about getting a, a driver um, for the Head Starts program, and, and we have to, I think, kind of watch that, um, that service that we have, because um, it's like, it, it's there, it's been there for 51 years after this explosion, the families need it. Um, the, the children, you can tell the difference between children that participate in the program after they've entered the program. The, um, it, it's a fantastic program. So um, I think that if we work together and put our heads together and everybody put their notes together like we've done for Christmas, um, uh, thank you, Miss uh, Katie, for, for helping out the Woodbine uh, Women's Club, the Woodbine Library, Thigh Call, the NAACP, and also outside of Camden County uh, was the, the Georgia Coastal Community Foundation. We have 71 children that they wanted to make Christmas good for, and everybody came together and worked together. So I'm just asking tonight that this um, program that we have initially opened 30 days after the ex explosion at the thigh call plant. If we all work together then, somehow now 
We all need to talk to each other and communicate with each other. The children need a bus driver. Thank you. Ms. Cheney, I think Mr. Boatwright, I saw him making notes and I'm pretty well think what he's doing. So can you can you look into what it takes to get that started or where that happens? Yes, sir. I, I think there's probably some avenues we can look down and see if we can try to assist with a bus look driver. Her up and yes. let her know. Yes, ma'am. I'll reach out. Yes, Ms. Ms. Hamperton and Ms. Gordon, they're over the center. Um, they, they have the bus, they have the funding. They just can't find a driver since COVID. Do these, do these bus drivers operate the same time as the school system? Yes. So, I, know, I know uh, we have several different agencies, Board of Education and several others that are struggling to try to well, find bus drivers bus right now. But there may be some opportunities for some retirees that are out there that may be willing to provide some service levels. So we'll um, try to reach out. I All believe right. some of the Coastal Regional Commission drivers may be interested because Great they, idea. Cut, they yeah. cut back on the number of buses that was running. Right. Those people have the passenger endorsement on their license and everything, and you must have that to all the children. Yes. Okay. There's Thank a great you. idea right there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lane. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyone else? You're going to make my last meeting long, aren't you? Ben's it now. Ain't nobody coming after him. If you're going to speak, you better speak for Ben. I'm going to make sure Ben's last. He gets to close it up. My name is Ben Goff, and I live at Harris Bluff, Georgia. And no, Ben, I don't have your damn aluminum picnic table. I'm going out without him, big guy. <laughs> Representative government, an electoral system where citizens vote to elect people to represent their interests and concerns. Those elected meet to debate and make laws on behalf of the whole community or society. The right of citizens to participate in government is an important principle of representative government. The purpose of voting and other forms of civic engagement is to ensure that the government serves the people and not the other way around. It is a time consuming endeavor to serve in any civic position and anyone that chooses to do so should be recognized for the effort, and I do recognize your effort in participating. It should in every case be undertaken to serve the citizens in every respect, not for power or personal recognition, monetary gain, or other personal enhancements. I find it ironic that the two of you that are retiring from the board shortly have managed to see more than $12 million exit the county coffers to outside, furthering what would appear to be a search for fool's gold. This seating of commissioners has also seen alleged embezzlement of a large sum, some say between three and $7 million, by employees of the PSA, this is alleged, with assistance from county employees, allegedly. Additionally, alleged ethics violations were presented by a former commissioner and one of the two retiring commissioners. Yet as of today, none of that action has made it to court and I wonder why. I personally have observed less than stellar activities performed by the five of you over the course of the past few months, with some activities just mind boggling. A county administrator job searching while continued authorized expenditures of enormous sums of money. Announcing after an executive session that the county attorney had been appointed as the interim county manager. And in the next breath, announcing the appointing of a search firm for a replacement. In the subsequent meeting, announcing the hiring of the former deputy administrator to fill the vacant position. Sadly, this action required the resignation of the individual who had just accepted a job at another city. That action speaks directly to the character and dependability of the individual. I'm opinionated, but I will never believe that there was a, that was a smart move by either the individual or the commissioners making the decision. We have seen five years of performance by the deputy, and it has been less than stellar, and I do not anticipate any innovative action by this administration in the future. I firmly believe that the citizens 
of Camden County deserve accountability, communications, and transparency from elected officials. And yet we do not see any of that from the five of you in a general sense. A county commissioner must swear an oath and that oath should be of utmost importance. But sadly, it would appear that is not always taken as such. In my humble opinion, there have been multiple moral ethics violations committed by the board, including the two retiring as of this meeting. Apparently not though. These apparent violations represent open record statutes, as well as frivolous spending of tax dollars on unnecessary items, as well as extraordinary salaries and benefits to certain administrative employees of the county. You got your three minutes, Mr. Gall. Appointments to boards without due consideration of qualifications of those applying, exhibiting cronyism and nepotism. And finally, to the two incoming commissioners, be aware that the majority of the county citizens have had enough and a little leeway, a little leeway will be forthcoming. I just took somebody else's time. Thank you. Well, once again, thank you for your enlightening and insightful analysis. Yeah. <laughs> Is anyone else? He lost twice. See? Uh, shows how I'll make the motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Second. My name is Robert Bauer and I live out on the on the bluff. Uh, I got one complaint and I think the administrator over here can handle it. Maybe, I don't know. But you got one employee in this building right here that when you call up, all you get is her answering machine. You leave a message on the answering machine and I've done this for the past four weeks and have yet to get an answer. And I have been told that she don't even come into the office, period. And if she's collecting our money and not working on our projects, then she needs to either be terminated or reprimanded. Thank you. Why don't you get with Mr. Boatwright and y'all can have that discussion. All righty. What? Who? Tag on. Make them. Uh, oh. Constitutional officer. Oh, good luck with that one. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Motion carries. We're adjourned.